Microsoft Lists has two options to automatically create a Power BI set of visualizations and a data model from your data. Those are export to Power BI and visualize this list. We're going to talk about the difference between these and how well they work in a minute. But first, when would you want to use these? So these buttons are geared towards people who are new to Power BI and they're okay when you're trying to do data visualization on a single Microsoft list. They take care of a lot of the data cleanup for you, meaning that they pull display names out of person type fields for you and they kind of clean things up a little bit and they can also handle when you add new fields to your list which is something you have to do manually if you're creating it yourself you don't have to fiddle with the back end of the model at all and that's why it's nice for new people but it's also got some drawbacks that we're going to get to later we do have to tweak the visualization that this generates a little bit because out of box it's a little bit iffy but that only takes a few minutes and i'll show you how to do that my personal opinion on this is that it's okay if you don't want to be fiddling with the data model if you're like me and you love fiddling with the data models i'll be doing another video right after this one on how to do this all from scratch too so subscribe if you want to be notified when that comes out so in this case we are displaying task data and we want to count task by status and compare the estimated and actual effort. That's something that this can totally handle for us. So the data set that we're working with is created in Microsoft Lists in part one of this video series. So if you want to follow along, please see that one first. Let's get started. Here's our Microsoft List that we set up last time. This is the board view. I've set a couple of these tasks to complete and varied the percentage complete on a couple of in progress ones just so that we have something to work with when we start reporting on it. But for this integration, our buttons are up here in the toolbar. So under export, we have an export to Power BI and then under integrate, which which for most people will probably just be in the top bar. Mine's collapsed under this sub menu because I've shrunk everything down. So in here, you can choose integrate Power BI and visualize this list. These two features do completely different things and that might not be obvious from just looking at it. The visualize this list is going to create us a full report and data model inside a really weird kind of like twilight zone Power BI workspace where you can't actually get to the report through the normal UI. You have to go through this integrate menu to open the report unless you bookmark it and you don't have any control over how the refreshes work so as far as i can tell in this visualize this list the data that it's showing is going to update occasionally when people open it so it's not scheduled like you would normally see in a normal power bi report what that means is sometimes when you open it it takes a really 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 long time to load because it's refreshing when it loads so i don't really love the visualize this list option the output is going to be virtually the same no matter which one you use the difference is in how much control you have over what it's doing so this export to power bi option is the one that i prefer because you actually get the pbix file so you can download it if you want to you can make modifications to the data model if you want to and it lives in a real workspace you can choose the workspace you put it in so we're going to go through this one today i'm going to click on that and it's going to open up power bi for us so you can do this whole process in a web browser which which is kind of the, one of the nice things about it. I'm gonna put it in my workspace for now. And then it prompts me to choose which credentials I wanna use. For me, the credentials I used to connect to Power BI last time was this morning, so I can use this. If you've never used Power BI before, you probably gonna use my current credentials. So it takes a minute to create your data set. I want to point out that if you don't have a workspace to put it in, you can create one under this workspaces menu over on the left. There's a new workspace option here. When it's done, it prompts you to view your data set details. So if you need to get back to this later, you can go into your workspace. So for me, that was my workspace. And then it'll show up in here. I have a couple with the same name, so ignore that. But Mine's at the top of the list. The first thing you wanna do here is schedule your refresh because it's not scheduled by default. You want your data to updating, right? So we're gonna to go to this ellipses menu right here next to your data model and then go to settings and then scroll down to where it says refresh down here and turn it on and choose your schedule. So I want mine to be daily. Keep in mind it's UTC by default, so change that if you want to. And then your data source credentials is going to most likely have in here already for you because that's that box that you checked earlier. If it doesn't, for whatever reason, the type of authentication you want to use for SharePoint is OAuth2, not anonymous, and then just log in with your normal username and password and then click apply. Now it's going to be updating once per day. You can schedule up to eight times per day on the pro license tier. And I'll take a second to point out here if it's not obvious that people viewing this report need a Power BI license unless you have Power BI Premium. Keep that in mind. 
Now, if I go back to my workspace and then go to new item, I can create a report here. You're going to want to create a report, not a dashboard. Dashboards in Power BI show visuals from reports. You can make a report look like a dashboard, but you need a report first. So we're going to click on report here, and then it wants us to select a data source. So we can pick a published semantic model. So that's the thing that just got created for us in our workspace. So select that and then choose the data model that you just created. So for me, that's this one here. I guess it doesn't sort by last access time, but that's cool. You have the option here to auto create a report or create a blank report report. I'm going to show you what the auto create report looks like so you can see why you wouldn't use it. This will probably get better over time. So if you're watching this like two years from the published date, it might be better. So go ahead and try it. But here's what the auto creator report looks like. So it's got a bunch of charts summing things by date. Not very useful for task data. And this text box down here is giving us a bunch of list information. So we're not going to use this. It actually takes more time to try and modify what this has going on versus starting from scratch. So I'm going to go back and create a blank one. Here's our blank report. I am going to start off by pulling in a background image, make it look fancy. If you want a copy of this background image, I'm going to put a link in the video description. You can download it. We're going to go to the paintbrush icon and then to canvas background and then browse for an image and open it and then set the transparency to zero and set the image fit to fill. Now I want to add some visualizations back on this field. Well, I can open up the data pane over here with the table named table. And these are all of our fields from our list. So because of the magic way that they have set up the query in this model, it should automatically pull in any new fields when the model refreshes. So if you add columns to your list, go in and refresh your model and they should appear here. So we're going to start with a count of tasks by status and assignee. We're going to use the stacked column chart for that. So that's this one here. I'm going to make it tiny. So I only have two assignees. I'm going to put it in this little tiny card here. If you have more assignees, put it in the bigger. <laughs> this looks really lame when you only have two columns and it's stretched out to half the screen. So we're going to drop in our assigned two here on the x-axis. And then a count of our tasks. To count the tasks in here, we can't create measures. That's one of the drawbacks of this particular integration. But we can take this ID field and count it. So a counting of the ID is tasks. I'm going to put that in the Y axis count of tasks. And you'll see that the assign to is using the person's name. So this is actually an expanded person field. So it's extracting their name from that complex field. I want to point out here that if you have your assign to field or any person field set to multi-value, the model here hates that. So it errors out and your assign to field is blank. So this integration really works better with single value person type fields. Just keep that in mind. You can deal with multi-value if you're making your own model. I'm going to drop the status in as the legend. So down here, just drag that in and that's going to give us a count by status and assignees. So you can see who's got the most progress on their tasks. Obviously, the default colors on here are not, not amazing. So we're going to fix that. What I like to do is try and use the color to indicate something about what's going on. But we're going to create the rest of our visuals first and then fix all of the colors all at once. I'm going to do a donut chart for the second one. That's this circular one on the right hand side. So technically speaking, bar charts are better than pie charts and donut charts for relaying information, but I don't have a really rich model to work with here and I want it to be somewhat visually interesting. So I'm going with the donut chart. What we're going to do for this is effort hours by status. I'm going to use estimated effort hours for this because only completed tasks have actual effort hours logged. We're going to drop that in the values and then for the legend, use the status. What I like to do for these pie and donut charts is go to the format your visual and for the detail labels, set the label to show all detail labels. And then I turn off the legend, just kind of things look neater. We can also set the number of decimal points that these labels are showing. It's better to have them show less decimals unless you actually need the decimals. Percentage decimal place, I'm going to set to zero. Next, we're going to do a bar chart for the estimated and actual effort hours to compare how much time we thought things would take versus how much time they actually took. I'm going to do another column chart for that and then drag in the estimated. And then again, we want to rename these because the title is kind of long. So I'm going to call it estimated and actual. And I don't want it to be stacked. 
whoops, let's change it to clustered chart. You can swap the chart types and your data stays in them, which is kind of nice. We probably want a title for this dashboard too, right? So I'm going to put this up over here and then we're going to set the background to transparent. That's under effects, turn off the background and then add a title. You can use emojis in these titles. I like to, if I just click up here in my top bar and then right click, I get this emojis menu and I guess it's windows period as the keyboard shortcut, but I never remember keyboard shortcut. Other than copy paste, everybody always remembers copy paste. If we wanted to use like a rocket or something, we could. Um, rocket is probably overdone cliche at this point, but whatever. So I can cut and paste that out of the bar and put it into our text box. And that's going to size up with the font size. I'm going to put in our title and change the size. It can be kind of hard to click the edge of this thing to move it around. So if you have trouble with it, just use the ellipses menu because you can click and drag that too. But lastly, we need our table. So that's this square visual here. We're going to drop in here our task title the due date, and you'll notice it does something super funky here. So this is the time intelligence in Power BI. Um, you can fix this just by going to the little caret menu and then changing it from the date hierarchy to your actual field name. So due date in this case. And the format is funky. We're going to fix that in a minute. So just leave it for now and drop in your assigned to and the priority and the status. You can click and drag the columns to resize. And for the due date, I go to the paintbrush icon and after rolling through the menu for like two minutes and not finding it, I just search for the word format and it's under, where is it? Data format, apply settings to and choose the due date here and then choose your format. I want just the date. We can conditionally format these things. So if we wanted the in progress tasks to be highlighted, we can go to back to the fields pane here. There's a few places to get to this, but I like to do it through the field well. Click on the little down arrow next to the field name and go to conditional formatting, font color or background color or whatever you want. So we're going to say if this is in progress, then format it some other color, a little bit bright, maybe this blue. You notice there's a total down here. It's not summing anything, so we're going to turn off the total. It's in the paintbrush icon under totals. Turn it off. And then I also like to show the title just so it kind of matches the style of the rest of these visuals. So I'm going to turn the title on while it asks. So it's possible to flag overdue tasks with conditional formatting, like with a red flag icon. It's a lot easier to do that in the desktop application, meaning I don't think you can do it through the browser because you really need to be able to do some kind of DAX or Power Query to be able to compare today's date to the due date. We're going to save that for the next video where we create the model from scratch. But for now, let's get our formatting done for these visuals. I want to point out this tip that I noticed when I was going through here. If you select multiple visuals with control, if you go to format, it tells you that if you are selecting one or more visuals of the same type, you can change settings for more than one thing at a time, which is really a big time savings. But I'm going to go through and set the titles to the GOI, Sego, Segway, however you pronounce that, because it looks nicer. So it defaults to this DIN font that I don't really like. Fast forward, I'll be back in a second. I dialed these all back to size 12 font also, and now I'm going to set the color of this top bar up here. That's under grid border. You can choose more colors and it'll let you paste in a code. I also like to dial back the alternating background color of this gray here to be a little bit lighter. It's under values, alternate background color. Now for the colors, it looks like I forgot to put the filter on this one. Put a status filter on our estimated versus actual. We're going to drag status into filters and then set it to complete because only completed tasks have actual hours. So the comparison, if you have all of the statuses in there, is not super valid. I'm going to set that and close my filter pane. But this one I think would be really interesting to do kind of a burn up chart that's probably not the right word but like a cumulative line chart over time to show the comparison of estimated versus actual so you can see where things really did well or really dropped off a cliff right i'll probably do another video on that saying i'm going to do this one next that one next and now i have like five things that are going to be next but for right now we're going to set this to some colors that are kind of indicative of what's going on so paintbrush icon columns i can set the colors here select your series so estimated hours i could set this to like a really light gray and then i'm going to turn on the 
outline for that. So turn the border on. It'll make color the same color as that border that we just on the table. And then for actual hours, I'm gonna set it to that same navy. So you can do whatever colors you want, by the way. I'm just swinging it here. And then similar thing for these two charts here. I'm going to have the completed tasks be darker than the not started tasks because I feel like not started implies not happening yet, which is kind of gray in my head, or at least that's how my logic works. But don't overdo the color, okay? So like these three colors together is too much color. So for series, I'm gonna go to complete and set that to the navy. And then in progress, I go to more and paste in that same color code and then go for something that's a little bit lighter maybe that and then for not started i'm going to do light gray maybe a little bit too light let's go with one darker same thing for this pie chart saves the colors in there so it's faster the second time around now you want to save obviously so save this report choose a name and save. This report is going to update on our refresh schedule. So from here, make sure to share this thing. So the share button is how you grant access to people. You can share with distribution groups, with Microsoft 365 groups, with individuals. You can also use a sharing link. I don't particularly like the sharing links because it's harder to keep track of who has access to what, but that's an option. We can also embed this in SharePoint. So this is cool. If you take your report link, so that is take off this question mark experience equals bit. So you just want this report ID parameter here through the beginning of the link. Now, if I go to SharePoint, this is the site that I created my list in. If I go to create a new page here, just go with a blank page and put your project name at the top of the page and whoever's name you want to be associated with it, you can set a banner if you want to. There's this browse images here and they actually give you stock images to use. It's kind of cool. And then insert. I prefer the banner style of image and title. Color block is kind of nice too, but it takes up a lot of space. You could add a little bit of intro in this text box here if you want to, or you can delete it if you want to do that. And then you can embed both your list and your Power BI report on the same page. We'll do the list first. So choose list from the web part options here and then select the list that you want to embed. You can change which list view this is using, by the way, in the little edit properties icon menu. And then you can change the size. So if you are having trouble fitting everything in, just set the size to large. The auto size sometimes works, sometimes. Then we can add our Power BI report down here. So just click the plus. There's two plus buttons, one for section and one for web part. So just make sure you get the one for the web part unless you actually want a new section. If you search for Power BI in here, it'll pop up. So just add the Power BI web part and click on add and then paste in your report link from earlier. So this is not going to grant permissions to your Power BI report, just as an FYI. You still need to share it. It also doesn't bypass any licensing, so don't expect that. If you want to turn the navigation pane and action bar off, you can. It's just going to look cleaner when it's embedded. All right, so when you're done, republish up here and you're done. So it kind of looks better if I zoom out here so you can see what's going on. We've got our list and our Power BI report embedded on a page. So if you get fancy with a design on here, you can make it look more awesome. This is just to give you an idea of what's possible. So next up, we're going to be doing the creating the model from scratch so that we can do whatever we want with it. And we're going to be doing a cumulative sum of estimates versus actual hours. So subscribe if you want to be notified when those are ready. Thank you for watching. You have a great day.